Good morning, I'm Eleanor Breen. I'm the Deputy Director for Archaeology here at Mount Vernon. And we're standing in front of George Washington's 1775 kitchen. We're also standing in front of the archaeological excavation that's been taking place over the course of the summer, where we've made some amazing progress trying to learn more about one of Mount Vernon's great history mysteries. Right now, I'm kneeling in our archaeological excavation, and we're going to give you a site tour of some of the exciting discoveries that we've made over the course of the project this summer. So one of them right now, I'm troweling um, what we think are the cobblestones that line George Washington's driveway. So if you can imagine carriages coming to visit um, the mansion, they would have driven on this cobble surface um, that's just beneath our modern roadbed. Right now, we're standing in front of the kitchen that George Washington had built in 1775. So you can see the bricks that line the foundation of that kitchen. One of the discoveries that we've made is um, this row of bricks right here, which runs parallel to that kitchen, that we think is an early drain to carry water runoff from the kitchen down the lane. These bricks are actually sitting on top of another line of bricks that we think are evidence of the earliest kitchen that we know about here at Mount Vernon. Um, I'm probably kneeling on the corner of it right now. Um, and then just over on this side of the drain is another line of bricks that we think form the very bottom of the chimney associated with that first generation kitchen. I'm Luke Pecorero. I'm the Assistant Director for Archaeological Research here at Mount Vernon. And uh, right now I'm in a location of the site that we've also been working on this summer uh, towards excavation of the uh, first period Washington family kitchen. I'm actually kind of crouched in the center of what would have been that structure. But in the course of learning about that first period kitchen, we're learning about Washington's second period kitchen that still survives the structure right behind me from 1775. It's really nice that we have uh, some utility lines that have sliced right through our excavation. Some archaeologists would consider that a blessing or a curse, but it gives us a really great uh, look at the stratigraphic deposits that we have um, that have formed over time. Right here, you can see a nice red that's mixed with brown layer of soil with some brick and some mortar sticking out of it. This is a good 18th century deposit and it's nice and level. You can see it's got a uniform bottom. Uh, this soil would have been deposited here when the 1775 kitchen was constructed and leveled out probably for landscaping purposes. Right below that you have this nice kind of yellow soil with a nice layer of uh, gray with, um, with brown soil with some ash and, and charcoal bits. That layer would have been the occupation surface when the first period Washington kitchen was in use. And right below that, this soil that's uh, kind of forming this ledge, it's very compact, it's almost tan to a white, and uh, punching right through that, you see a soil difference right here. This is natural subsoil. And uh, this is what archaeologists like to see when they're excavating. Anything that punches through that is an intrusion that was uh, made by people um, in various cultural activities. And what I'd like to talk to you about are these uh, post holes. There are four of them. There's another one right behind me over here. And further on down the line, there's two more that are kind of cut into the sidewall. They have a nice flat bottom. They have red clay. They have some brick some mortar flex, and the soil composition is almost identical to what you see up here. We believe that these are scaffolding holes that were used to construct the chimney to the 1775 kitchen, and our placement, kind of centrally located right below that chimney base, uh, is a dead giveaway for their use. These only would have been open for a brief period of time, um, but they have nice flat bottoms and would have been perfect for placing scaffolding to construct that chimney base. We began this area in our excavation to explore the other first generation outbuilding that was on this west side of the mansion, and that's thought to have been the dairy building. I'm actually standing just outside of it. Um, underneath Karen over there is a large block of sandstone that we think represents the corner of this dairy outbuilding. Uh, the foundation continued, we think, about 16 feet over into that direction, um, and I'm actually standing on top of a layer of soil that's chock full of uh, the destruction 
um, evidence of that building and then the earlier kitchen. So what we see are large fragments of brick um, and even large fragments of wall plaster that would have all been torn down to make way for this kitchen that we see behind me. Um, and in fact, right now, archaeologists are working to excavate a small sliver of dirt, um, a feature that was dug into the ground to make way for the construction of the very bottom courses of brick of the foundation of the 1775 kitchen.